Hi everyone, welcome to Sugar Glider Diaries. I'm Kimberly. I am so excited about this video that I'm sharing with you today. This video is going to be a really great tool for a new sugar glider owner, a potential sugar glider owner, or somebody that's owned sugar gliders for a very long time, especially if that person is very experienced with sugar glider owners, is a part of any Facebook groups where people ask bonding questions a lot. It's very difficult to answer a bonding question in a short comment and to give people a really good idea of what they should do next. So this video is going to be a very comprehensive step-by-step -step guide on how to bond with basically any sugar glider. Whether you have a glider that is lunging and crabbing and trying to attack every time you come close, or you have a sugar glider that is already pretty tame and mellow and you just want to move to the next step, this is going to be a step-by-step, -step, hold your hand, walk you through it, guide on what to do. One step in front of the other. So I'm so excited that you're joining me and that you're watching this video. If you are on those Facebook groups or you know people that are having a hard time bonding with their sugar gliders, please consider sharing this video with those people. I really want this video to get out to as many people as possible because I really truly believe that it could be beneficial to them. So please watch it all the way through. And if you agree, please feel free to share. I have three pages of notes here. I have some of you whose your first language is not English and it's difficult for you to follow all of the things that I say in my videos. I had you guys in mind. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just put all of these notes in the description box. It will basically cover everything that I'm going over in this video. So if you get to a point in the video where you're confused on what the step looks like, it has just a brief summary of what each step looks like and all the tips that I'm going to give you leading up to those step-by-step -step process. Now, I want you to bear with me. This intro is gonna be kind of long because I think there are quite a few things that we need to cover before we get into the step-by-step -step process. The step-by-step -step process is actually very simple. It is very easily to apply to any situation. Very easily to apply, no. Very easy to apply to any situation, but there's a few things you really need to keep in mind before we get there. If you skip over the intro and go right into the steps, you're not gonna be nearly as successful because you need to have an idea, a framework, if you will, before you get into the steps so that you go into the steps with the right plan in place. I know that bonding with a sugar glider can be a very emotional and frustrating experience. And so I can't be there with you every single step of the way in person, but I'm really hoping that this video will be my way of helping you as if I was in your home, talking to you, sitting down on your couch and talking to you about, okay, what's going on with your sugar glider? Let's hear, here's what I would suggest to do next. Now, keep in mind, I only have three sugar gliders. I only have experience with three sugar gliders. And I've gotten all of those sugar gliders from responsible breeders. None of them were mishandled or mistreated before I got them. So I'm not saying that I am an expert on all things. What I am saying is that I have been very involved in a lot of sugar glider groups, a lot of forums on Facebook where people are talking about giving people tips and advice on what to do if their sugar glider is having a hard time bonding with them. I've soaked all that information in and in my mind, I've come up with a comprehensive plan that I think is gonna work for pretty much any situation. Obviously, there's always exceptions to the rule, but I really think that if you're very patient with each step and you take your emotion out of it, that's what I'm trying to do for you. I'm trying to take your emotion, the what you're feeling right now, if you're a new sugar glider owner, all you wanna do is love on your sugar glider. I know, because I was there. All I wanted to do was love on them and have them love me in return. But sometimes when we get like that, we can come off too overbearing and we're pushing what we want onto them. You may want to love on your sugar glider, but they may not be ready to love on you yet. And that's what this step-by-step -step process is gonna help you just develop that level of trust slowly and steadily so that they, when they're ready to bond with you, when they trust you, it's gonna be an amazing experience for both of you. Trust me, it'll be worth it. Rushing through these steps 
or chasing your sugar glider around the cage with your hand is only going to hurt your bond and set you back in your bonding process. So as hard as it may be, I need you to just take a deep breath and listen with open ears and an open heart to what I have to say. I'm going to link a video that I watched when I was first learning how to bond with my sugar gliders. And I'm going to be 100% honest and tell you, I did not have fully open ears and an open heart when I was listening to this message. I had, in my mind, I really had things that I wanted to be able to do with my sugar gliders. And I really wanted to have an extreme bond with all of my sugar gliders. So when somebody was telling me that that may not be the case, or it may not look the way that I want it to look, I was a little bit resistant to that and I did not fully implement all of these things that this video is talking about. This video is by a lady named Bourbon. She is a very, very experienced sugar glider owner. I'm going to link that video in the description box below. This is not a verbatim word for word what she says to do, but some of the concepts are very similar. And so I wanna credit her with that idea and also, I think that everybody would be benefited by watching this video. She has a lot of experience and I'm just telling you, please learn from my mistakes, be more open-minded and have more of a teachable spirit than I did when I watched Bourbon's video the first time. So not all sugar gliders are the same. That's why when somebody asks for advice on how to bond, there really is no just, oh, you just do this for this many days and then you do this for this many days and then they're going to bond with you. I do not have a timeline in this step-by-step -step process. I have, once your glider is doing this, or once your glider has stopped doing this, then move on to the next step. It is not saying that the first step you should do for this many days, the second step you should do for this many days, the third step you should do for this many days. That is not the case because not every glider is the same. So you really need to be paying attention to your glider, their cues that they're giving you, and be patient. Bonding with a sugar glider has a lot to do with getting to know that specific glider's personality, what they like, what they don't like, what they respond to, what they don't respond to, and also getting over your own insecurities about handling them and leaving your expectations about what that glider should or should not be doing at the door. If you walk into this relationship with a bunch of preconceived expectations, you're going to be disappointed more often than not. One expectation that I had that I am begging you to please leave at the door, I wasted way too much time on this expectation. I'm asking you to learn from my mistakes. I was very, very fixated on the idea of my sugar glider being able to be held in my hands or held in my hand like this. That is not a huge deal. Trust me, there are many ways for you to interact and love on your sugar gliders without you ever holding them in your hand. Your glider may at some point get there, but that is not the primary focus. The primary focus is to build that relationship and that level of trust. Holding them in your hand is one of the possible perks that you may, and I say may, not will, have with some gliders. Not all gliders like to be held in your hand. In fact, most gliders do not. I know that there are a lot of videos and pictures out there where you see people holding them in their hand. Let me tell you, the reason why they go so viral and they're so shared is because it is rare. It's not common. So please leave that expectation at the door and walk into this with an open mind. One thing that you may want to invest in, and I'll talk about this later in the video as well, is an open environment pouch. I'm going to get a couple open environment pouches and show those to you later, but keep that term in mind because we're gonna come back to that later. The reason why an open environment couch couch. <laughs> the reason why an open environment pouch can be very beneficial. Now this is Bourbon's illustration. I'm just going to share it with you here. This is paraphrasing a story that she shared. When you have a child that is afraid of the dark, 
and you go into their room, typically they are hunkered under their covers with their eyes closed. They have imagined in their mind the worst case scenario is in their closet or in the corner of their room because they can't see it. Your glider does the same thing. When they're not familiar with your home, your smells, your sounds of your environment, this new environment that they're in, they have imagined the worst case scenario. So if they are in a pouch where they cannot easily see out of and they hear you coming at them and they're not familiar with your voice or that sound, they have invented a monster in their mind. But if they have a pouch where they can see you coming up to the cage, they can see you trying to interact with them, they recognize you more easily, that dissipates very much faster. This is one thing that I did do with my first two gliders when I got them, is I had open environment pouches for probably this first six months to a year of having them. I did find that it was very, very helpful in reducing the amount of crabbing. They seemed to trust me a lot faster because they could see me coming. As you're watching your glider and you're paying attention to their physical cues, if you notice that you're doing something and it makes your gliders breathing speed up or that makes their body get tense and they get very standoffish, I want you to note what you're doing. I want you to note how close you are to the cage at that point. I want you to note if your hand is being exposed. Sometimes a hand can be very intimidating to a glider. It can look like a mouth. For whatever reason, gli gliders do not tend to like your open hand. They might be more receptive to the back of your hand or to your arm. So notice these things as you're studying your glider. One thing to keep in mind also, while you're bonding with your gliders, this is less important once you've had them for an extended period of time and you've already established a really close bond, but while you're bonding, you do not want to change your smell. Your smell is one of the main ways that they recognize you. Smell and sound. If one of those two elements is different, they're going to think you might be a different person and it's gonna set back the bonding process. So do not change your shampoo. Do not change your lotion. Do not change your cologne or your perfume while you are going through this bonding process. One thing that you can do at any level of bonding is putting little pieces of fleece that smell like you in their sleeping pouch. This allows them to smell you while they're in their comfort zone. So you can just take little pieces of fleece and put them in your bra, put them in your pillow, sleep with them at night, and then change them out of their sleeping pouch every couple days so that every time they're in their sleeping pouch, they always have something that smells like you. After you're bonded with them, this is gonna be a comfort to them as well. So it's something that you could do at any stage of bonding. This could be a little bit harder to do if your glider is at what I will call ground zero and they are lunging and crabbing and trying to attack every time you come near. You may need to do this when they're sound asleep and put the little pieces of fleece in the bonding pouch when they're not in it and then put it in the cage. If you put your hand in the, in the pouch when they're, they're at that stage, they may attack you. But still, this is gonna be a really helpful bonding method to use. Before I get started into these steps, I will also say I'm not going to cover every single thing that I've talked about in all my other videos in this video. I have many videos on bonding and handling with handling your sugar gliders. So it's gonna be really important that you go back and look at those videos. If you're really struggling, I would really suggest just binge watching these bonding and handling videos. Sometimes when you've watched something two or three times, you're gonna pick up on something that you didn't know before or you didn't pick up on the first time. So I really suggest watching these videos over and over and over. All right, are you ready to get into the step-by-step -step process? That was a very long intro, but it was very important. Thank you for bearing with me. Now we're ready to jump into the step-by-step -step process on what to do to bond with every sugar glider, no matter what the experience. Keeping in mind, every sugar glider is different and you don't have to implement this the same way that I'm telling you to. I'm just telling you, if you're asking for my advice, this is what I would advise you to do. This is absolutely not the only method out there. There are lots of methods. You're, you have your own free will. You can do whatever method you want. This is 
what I am recommending. This is my personal method that I would do if I had a glider that I needed to bond with. And so I'm just passing that on to you as a friend. Hi. Okay, so I'm really briefly gonna go over what you would do if your glider is what I would call at ground zero. That is lunging, attacking, crabbing, trying to get you to go away at all costs. You would say, I feel like my glider hates me. Every time I come close, they try to attack me and bite me and lunge at me. So your glider is petrified at you at this stage. So what we need to do is get your glider to be more used to you and your presence. So all you're gonna do at this stage, do you hear that sound? One of my gliders in, is in heat, that's what that sound is. Anyway, so all you're gonna do at this stage is be physically present, that's it. You're going to do this for as little as long as you can where you feel like your glider can handle it. I would say start off with even 15 minutes during the day when they're their sleepiest and calmest. Now, obviously the very first couple days you have your glider home with you, you wanna leave them alone. This is after that. So if your glider is lunging and trying to attack, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a chair, you're gonna sit in the room where your glider's in their cage. You're gonna put your glider in an open environment pouch so that they can see you and they know that you're there without having to look in to the pouch. That's very intimidating. If you were in a little pouch and this big face came at you and you were not familiar with that big face, you would not be happy to see that big face and you would try to lunge and attack and bite them. That's the only time my gliders have ever been, I would say aggressive is when I did that, when they didn't know I was coming, they didn't hear me coming, they didn't recognize my voice or my sounds or my smell yet. And I peeked in to their little sleeping pouch that they were nice and cozy and comfy in. And they looked up and ah, they freaked out because this big scary thing was staring at them. So what we wanna do is eliminate that. We wanna eliminate the scary boogeyman in the dark so that they can see who's coming. So all you need is an open environment pouch. I have a couple things that would work as an open environment pouch, but they are not the only things that are out there for an open environment pouch. First, if you have regular pouches, if you've already purchased regular sleeping pouches that look like this, and you say, I don't, I already got these and I want to start this, but I don't have an open environment pouch. What you can do is change this into an open environment pouch. So if you have a shelf, or something on the on the cage, you can lay this on there. You do not wanna just lay it on there without securing it though. You need to hook these onto the bars of the cage so that when they're moving around and fidgeting, they're not gonna slide and fall off of the shelf that they're on. But you could feasibly use this. If you're good at sewing and you can do something with non-exposed seams, that's not me, I can't do that, but you could hook something here and hang it this way. But that's not, I'm not saying to do that because I have no idea how to do that. And you can't have any exposed seams. So anyway, that's all I'll say about that. This is the one that I used when my gliders were using open environment pouches because they were getting to know who I was. This worked really well for me. It's not invented for an open environment pouch to my knowledge, but it worked nicely because they had two different levels they could go on. And no matter what the angle, they could still see me. I would put little blankies in there that smelled like me that they could hide under, but they could still easily poke their little head out and see me coming if they wanted to. You could also use kind of a corner. These are actually, I think they're called corner hammocks, but you could use this as an open environment pouch too. You could hang it like this to where this is facing the front of the cage and then they could see you coming. So any version of a pouch where they can see you coming is what you want, especially if your glider is crabbing from the pouch. That means they are afraid. Because of them being in the pouch, they've kind of created a boogeyman and they need to be able to see you coming. Ground zero, all you're gonna do, you're gonna have your glider in an open environment pouch. Do not have any other pouch available because they will not choose to sleep in the open environment pouch. They will only choose to sleep in the one that is the most dark and the most secure. So you can only have open environment pouches in the cage at this stage. You'll probably be able to introduce 
regular pouches later. But at this stage, at ground zero, if we're lunging and crabbing and biting, we need an open environment pouch. Now, you're gonna sit in a chair as close to the cage as you can without them attacking. You can do this during the day and you can do it at night. You could do it once a day, you could do it twice a day, you could do it as often as you want. But all you would do at this stage, because this is not even step one, this is ground zero, you're just going to sit there and that's it. You're gonna sit there, they're gonna po probably poke their head out, they're gonna see that you're there, they might crab at you, and you're just gonna sit there. Now, if they start crabbing at you for longer than 30 seconds, then you need to move your chair slightly away. That's all you do. You're going to sit as close as they will allow you to sit without trying to lunge and attack and bite. You're just gonna sit there quietly. That's all you do for, for ground zero. Now, how you know that you're ready to move on to step one from ground zero is when the lunging and attacking and trying to bite at you has dramatically decreased. I would say until the lunging has basically stopped and you might get some crabbing still, but besides that, the lunging has dramatically decreased. Now you're ready for step one. Step one is just a baby step from ground zero. So now we're still sitting in the chair. We're still sitting as close to the cage as they will allow. That may mean that you're by the entryway to the door. You may not be very close, but you're gonna be as close as they will allow. Now you're gonna start introducing your voice. So you're going to sit by the cage. I would recommend one hour during the day, one hour at night, sit there and just read a children's book out loud for an hour during the day and during the night. You may be pretty far away from the cage at this stage, but that's okay. Each day that you do this, try to scoot your chair a little bit closer and the next day a little bit closer. Baby steps here. This is what we're going for, developing trust baby steps. Once your glider is comfortable with you being nice and close to the cage, the second part of step one is to start giving treats through the bars of the cage. You may be able to skip ground zero altogether and move right to step one. Unless your glider is lunging and crabbing and attacking, you might be able just to start at step one. So you're gonna sit nice and close to the cage and you're going to offer treats through the bars of the cage. At this stage, during the day, you can also open the door and close the door. Maybe do that a few different times so that they get used to that sound. They get used to the idea that you are gonna be coming and going, but nothing bad is gonna happen. Your gliders may still do little crabs like that because they are trying to sleep and I am being really loud next to their cage. That's basically the, them just saying, mom, I'm trying to sleep, go away. That's normal. So opening and closing the cage is okay. You can do that. You'd wanna be careful though and not do that a bunch at nighttime because if they're not bonded to you, they may try to escape because they're trying to get away from you. They might think that you're gonna come at them. You wanna do this opening and closing of the door during the day while they're asleep. That means you wanna put their food in the cage for the nighttime during the day while they're asleep also. Obviously later in the day, but still before they're fully awake. So now you're gonna sit here, talk, read a book, maybe hum a little tune, a nice soothing tune, just so that they get used to your voice. You could even have a phone call with one of your friends, anything where you can sit there and they can just get used to your voice. When they come up and they seem like they're interested in you, offer them a treat through the bars of the cage. And if they take it, great, you're golden. That's a very good sign. Okay. You're ready to move to step two when your glider will regularly take treats from your hand and they are no longer lunging at all. The crabbing is very, very reduced and they're very, getting interested in you. They will come up and maybe sniff at you through the bars of the cage. If you offer the side of your hand, maybe they'll come up through the bars and smell you. They're getting interested and they're getting more comfortable. Now you're ready for step two. All right. Now we're ready for step two. Congratulations, you graduated to step two. Step two is introducing a zippered bonding bag. Before I get too far into this, I want to note 
When you're introducing a zippered bonding bag, you need to do this in a safe environment. So close the door to the room where the cage is being kept. Try to make sure that you don't have your other animals around because you don't know if your glider is going to try to jump out of the zippered bonding bag before you've had a chance to zip it. So please be aware of your surroundings before you try this. I did have a couple times where they tried to escape and thankfully everything was okay, but you do wanna make sure that you take as many safety precautions ahead of time as possible. Also, when you're doing talking about doing a zippered bonding bag, if when you get your glider in the zippered bonding bag, they freak out and they hate it, and all they try to do the whole time is get out of it. Sorry, one of my gliders is in heat, so she keeps making noises. <laughs> if all they try to do is get out of it and crab and lunge and they hate it, then you need to take a step back. Go back to step one and that's okay. Do it for a little bit longer and then try the bonding bag a little bit later. The other thing that you can do, I'll show you how to try to soothe them. You don't need to abandon the bonding bag immediately, but if they're not settling after, I would say maybe 10 minutes or so, then you probably should take a step back to step one. So I'm gonna show you how to get your glider from the sleeping pouch that they're in into a bonding bag. There are a lot of different varieties of bonding bags. I'm sorry, I cannot tell you where I got all of these. I got them way before I started a YouTube channel and my memory is terrible. So I do not remember all the amazing vendors I got these from. Um, this, I remember where I got it from. Please do not get this. This is from Exotic Nutrition. It is not a safe zippered bonding bag. It has exposed seams and unfortunately it's not safe. So I would not recommend investing your money in this. You want a bonding bag that does not have any exposed seams. I have quite a few bonding scarfs. These are actually my favorite because they tend to open up wider. They usually have a wider mouth than, than a regular bonding bag does. And so that allows for just more freedom when you're bonding, when, you're, when you start opening up the zipper and you're interacting with your glider that way. So these are all bonding scarfs. I don't usually wear them as scarfs. I usually wear them kind of more like this, but still they're nice and I enjoy these. I obviously used to use bonding bags a lot more than I do now. So I have a lot of them. I have, you know, some, you can have really deep ones like this. You always want to make sure they have a vent so that they can breathe. This is actually a bra bonding pouch. So it's actually meant to go in your shirt. I have this one. This has a nice big opening as well. I really like, this is one of my favorites. And then this one is a little kind of satchel type one. It has a little flap. So if you're gonna be out and about, it looks, I, I really liked it because it looked like a purse. So you could wear it on your hip like this and no one would really know you had gliders. I'm going to put them in this bonding bag. So all you're gonna do so if you have some little sleeping pieces, remember we talked about the little anti-pill fleece, little sleeping pieces that they've been sleeping with, I would take some of those, put them in the scarf or the bag, wherever you're trying to get them to go in. And I'd also put a couple of treats in there just to increase their, your chances that they'll actually be inclined to go in there. Cause it's a new thing. They're not really a big fan of new things. Okay, so then what you're gonna do is take your bonding bag and your bag of gliders, your sleeping pouch, and you're just gonna put the opening in the opening and gently push the bottom of the sleeping pouch until they're all out of the bag and they are in the bonding bag now. Now you're gonna make sure all the tails and everything are secure and zip it closed. That's it. That's all you have to do. Now you can wear this around the house. You could even put it under your shirt as long as it's not too hot and there's enough airflow. You can wear it, like I said, you can kind of wear it like a sling. I would, if they're having a hard time settling, this is what you're gonna do. Obviously mine are not having a hard time, they're fine. But if they were crap, if they're having a hard time settling, this is what you're gonna do. That's a sound that a glider makes when they're in heat. That's not a crab, just so you know. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold 
the bonding pouch or the scarf or whatever close to you. You're gonna hold it, not hard, but nice and firm, and you're just gonna rub the pouch. You can also hum a tune. That's one thing that Bourbon says to do in her video is hum Silent Night or some sort of soothing tune. And that's gonna help them to calm down. They feel more secure when they're being held tight. Now, that does not mean that if you want them to feel secure, you're gonna squeeze them in your hand. But if they're in a bonding bag, you can just lightly press them against your chest, hold them tight and rub until they calm down. So that's step two. Now, when you're ready for step three, step three can look a lot of different ways. But even when you move to step three, you do not have to discontinue using the zippered bonding bag. This is now something you can just work into your daily routine. Try to pick around the same time of day and for around the same length of time for them to be able to get into a habit that this is the time that I'm with mom or I'm with dad and I'm bonding so they get used to the routine. Gliders are very keen on routines. At some point, you may decide to swap doing a zippered bonding bag for maybe a version like my no sew bra pouch. I never really have my gliders in a zippered bag unless I'm gonna be taking them out of the house. Around the house, I always have them in my no sew bra pouch. I feel like it allows them to be closer to my smell, to my skin, it allows for just a little bit more interaction with them. But if you never want to do that, if you only want to do this, you can still interact with your gliders this way. You're just gonna open, you're gonna unzip it and still kind of hold it tight, get them soothed, get them to go to sleep. And then you can pet them and interact with them and look at them through the zippered bonding bag. I would suggest if you wanna do that, to get a zippered bonding bag that has a nice wide opening so that you're not having to reach your hand super far deep inside the bag to interact with them. If you do move on to doing a no-sew bra pouch or something that's not secure, make sure that until you are reasonably confident they're gonna stay on you or in that bag that you are in a glider safe room and that you don't have any other pets or anything that could attack them if they were to escape for a moment until you caught them. Hi guys, editing Kimberly here. One thing that I realized I don't think I mentioned in the whole video, very, very simple. I will not take up much of your time. This video is long enough as it is, but do not ever, and I really mean ever, grab at your unbonded glider. Even my biter, my biters, my gliders, now that they are bonded, I don't grab at them. I scoop with my hands, I guide with my hand, I don't grab. I will still get bit if I grab. So, and I have that explained in a lot of my other videos. I'm not gonna waste any more of your time. I just wanted to mention that one thing before we move on to the next step. Okay, so now you're on step three. So step three, you're going to continue using whatever version of a bonding bag you choose, whether that's zippered, a no sew bra pouch, some sort of time that they can spend on you. They are marsupials. They like to sleep in warm, dark places and they like to be by your heart. So that's why a bonding bag works really nicely um, and or a no sew bra pouch works really nicely also. Now, there are a few different options you have to increase your level of bond and trust and interaction with your gliders. This is what I would call different choices of lifestyle. So now you need to decide, do you want your gliders to be gliders that you spend daily time in this tent? Do you want to spend time in a room where they can run around and jump on you and then jump on other things and have full exploration of a glider safe room? Do you want to spend time in the bathtub with obviously no water? but in the bathtub where they can run around all over you. I'm gonna talk a little bit about each of these bonding options, and then I'm gonna talk about the bonding option that I have chosen. I in no way want to imply that my way that I have chosen is the best way. I do not believe that. I have simply chosen the bonding method that is easiest for me, my lifestyle, and the goals that I have for my gliders. You need to decide <laughs> You need to decide what the best choice is for you and your gliders. So here we go. I'm going to talk about each of the next three 
different types of bonding activities. And then I will talk about the fourth level or the fourth kind, and that is what I have chosen to do. Bonding lifestyle number one is the bonding tent. All right, now we're in the bonding tent. This is the bonding tent that I would personally recommend. It's a much higher quality than the other mosquito net tent. When I used to do tent bonding, which all of these methods I can speak to personally because I tried them all. So I can tell you the benefits, I can tell you the drawbacks, and I think that this is gonna be really helpful. So this tent is much higher quality and much more durable than the tent that I had previously. However, it's probably a three or four times more expensive. So if you're on a budget, there's a very inexpensive mosquito net tent that actually is much bigger than this as far as wide. You won't, it's not quite as tall, I don't think, but it's still, it's nice and big. So there's lots of different options. One thing, if you're gonna do a tent bonding time is you definitely want socks and you probably want long pants, long sleeve shirt, and possibly even a sweatshirt. I'll show you what I used to do when I did the tent bonding time. This is my tent bonding time sweatshirt. I would usually have long pants on, not shorts, but definitely socks, and you probably want something with a hood it also is helpful if you have something with a big pocket. So if your glider is exploring and they want to go to sleep on you, that's one option that they could kind of have a little bit of fun in your pocket. Also, when you're doing these tents, they're going to climb up and they're going to jump on your head, which is why you want a hat or a hoodie. Also, one thing that your gliders might do is start grooming your head. If your gliders are not very gentle, like mine were not very gentle, that could be quite uncomfortable. So that's also why I chose to use a hoodie. You want socks because they like toes and they like to nibble on toes. Nothing is gonna make you squirm and freak your gliders out more than if, you, if they start nibbling on your toes and you jerk away. When you're doing bonding time in the tent, it's very important that you stay calm, you stay as still as possible, if they climb on your back, please learn from my mistakes. Do not stick your hand and try to pet them or get them off of your back. That is the only time that I've gotten really, really bit hard on the finger. When I very first had my gliders and we were doing tent bonding time, Natiri got on my back. I thought, oh, I'll just pet her while she's on my back. She saw my hand as a direct threat and she latched on so hard that all I could do, all I wanted to do was just uh, fling her off, but I didn't. I went, oh, 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 and finally she let go, but it was very painful and took much longer than I wanted her to, to let go. So don't do that. One thing, so when you're ready to bring your gliders into the tent, you can either bring them in their sleeping pouch and then what I would do, sometimes people say, oh, I sat in the tent and I just waited for my gliders to come out and play and they never did. Well, they're probably not going to, especially if it's not their normal time to wake up. I would suggest doing tent bonding time and bathroom bonding time, really any play bonding time that I'm gonna be showing you. I would do that, you know, if they normally get up, say at nine o'clock, I would start doing that around eight o'clock. So they're still a little bit sleepy, but they're not completely zonked like the middle of the day. There are people that have trained their gliders to do playtime in the middle of the day, and I think that's totally fine. If you don't give your gliders an option to go back in their sleeping pouch, they're probably gonna wake up enough to enjoy and have a good time. So really, whatever works with your schedule is what you should probably do. So my gliders are not in here right now, but if they were, you would, just pop them out, just like we did for to get them into the bonding pouch, just pop them out. And then I would take, I would unzip and I would actually put this outside of the tent so they don't even try to get it. You could also sit on it, but then they're probably gonna smell it and try to get under your butt. So once you get to where they are in the tent with you, they're going to glide around or they're gonna climb all over you. They're gonna jump from the tent to you. 
And the other thing you're gonna want to have with you is some wipes, some unscented baby wipes work great, toilet paper, something to clean up their poop and pee because they are probably gonna poop and pee all over. So you don't really wanna sit in that and squish, squish it and all of that. So if they get on your back and you don't want them to be on your back, one thing you can do is back up against the tent or up against the wall and that'll usually force them to come more forward. Yeah. So that is all I have to say about the bonding tent. And now we're on to the next option for bonding, which is bathroom bonding. Okay, so bathtub bonding time is also a really nice way to get your gliders to directly interact with you. The difference between bathtub bonding time and tent time is really if they want to climb up and down on something, you're the only option. So I really like this option for bonding because they're kind of forced to be more on you, whereas the tent, they have a lot more to explore. However, I really think the tent is a great source of enrichment. I still have my gliders use the bonding tent. I just don't get in the bonding tent with them. I let them run and explore and play in there on their own. So when you're doing the bathroom bonding time, obviously you want to remove anything that they could get, get into, you know, soap, shampoos, things like that, that they could you know, start to bite on before you got to them. You could also bring toys, treats, things like that in the, in the bathtub with you. This is a really nice option because most people have a bathtub already. So you could, you could do this every day for as long as you wanted. I would try to build a regular routine if this is gonna be your for, form of bonding. And I would definitely still wear socks and maybe even a hoodie would be less important because they can't jump onto your head, but it still might not be bad if they're, if they're rough groomers like mine are so but my hoodie got hot so I took it off this is what a, a bonded a really extreme bonded glider will do though they really she just really wants to be on me also with bathroom bonding make sure if you have a gap under the door in your bathroom that you secure that closed that you put something to where they can't get under it and you have the lid to your toilet seat down because if they do jump off of you and out of the bathtub and you can't get them to in, in time, that could be dangerous. You a squirrely girl, yes. So because my gliders are bonded to me and they have heard me talking and get handling them, but I have not done my normal routine, they are all very curious as to what's going on. So they are all climbing all over me. Okay, well, I'm just going to start filming this video because they are thinking it's playtime right now. So we're just going to go with it. So the third option that you have if you're doing a lifestyle type bonding routine with your gliders is to allow them to free roam in a glider safe room. Some people actually transform a room in their house into a glider proof safe room. There are some people that have toys all over the floor, all over the walls, mesh that they can climb up on the walls. At one point, I actually had this room in a vert and transitioned into a version of that. So when I did that, I had a rope that was hung from here to their cage that they could climb on. I would just sit here and they could climb all over the room and explore. So one thing that you could do if you wanted to allow your gliders to have more free roam experience is to make a whole room or even like a closet in your house safe for them so that you could be in the room with them. They could climb on you, but they'd also have the chance to free roam and explore, jump around, play on toys, climb the walls, climb the curtains, whatever you want to do. There are a lot of people that really, really enjoy this with their gliders and it's very enriching for the owner and the glider. A lot of people don't have that option. They don't have that space. They don't have uh, the, that, they basically don't have that option to convert a whole room into a glider safe room. But that is, if you do have that space, that would be one really nice option. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk to you about the fourth lifestyle of bonding that I have chose, chosen 
I don't know, the one that I do and why. So the lifestyle option that I have chosen is to train my gliders to stay on me, whether at night or during the day. This I've chosen this for a few reasons. Like I said, I have tried tent time. I've tried bathroom bonding time. I tried converting a room into my house into a glider safe room. Now the room in my house that was a glider safe room, I would not just let them have free reign in there without my supervision. It was glider safe with supervision. I will just say that. But I have tried all of those things and I have found things that I liked and disliked about each of them. I won't go into that in great detail. The number one thing though, is that when you have that kind of experience, they are not really forced to interact with you as much as I guess I would have liked or what I feel like really benefits a bond. They are so stimulated with other things that they do pay attention to you. And some people find that they end up staying on you most of the time anyway. But what I found was that it trained my gliders to, to know that it was okay to jump from me to wherever they wanted. So you notice that when Sela Luna was in the tent with me, she didn't jump off of me onto the tent. Now, I don't, if I let her in there a long time, she probably would have because she's used to being able to jump around in the tent. But because I've trained them to stay on me and I've learned how to handle them and what to do if they did get off of me and I momentarily needed to pick them up, um, I, I'm able to carry them around the house. I'm able to show them to people. If they come over, I can bring them out and show them my gliders. And I'm not concerned that they're going to jump off and run away. Um, now this has taken a lot of practice and this is just what works for me. This is not necessarily what will work for everybody. A lot of people really find a lot of fulfillment in tent time, in bathroom bonding time, in any kind of time with their gliders, and they don't feel the need to train them not to jump off of them. Now I will say, I don't think you can have your cake and eat it too. I don't think that you can have a free roam bonded glider where they're used to being able to run free in the room and then jump on you and jump off of you. And then the next day say, I don't want them to do that. I wanna walk around the house with them and expect them not to jump off of you or run down your legs and explore the house. They're just, I mean, that's like telling them two different messages. It's mixed messages for your glider. So I really think it's important that you pick what you want to do. Now, if you wanted to do tent time some days and bathroom bonding day time some days, I think that's totally fine. You don't have to necessarily pick one or the other of the other three forms of bonding that I showed earlier. You could do a little bit of all of them if you wanted. However, I do think that a routine is nice. And so that might be beneficial to your glider if they had a routine to do. But because I've trained my gliders to stay on me, I try to keep them in this zone. I, Stella Luna does like to go on my back and I do allow her to do that now because I trust her not to jump off of me. She just has done it enough that for the most part, I know that she won't jump off of me. But for the most part, I try to keep them on the front of me. If now she gets to my back, I try to lean back against the wall or I go, I put my arm back here and then she climbs on my arm and then I bring her back around. It's kind of a fun little game that we've invented together. So that's what I've chosen to do with my gliders. But like I said, that does not mean that that's for every person. So to sum up, as far as the lifestyle forms of continued bonding, you could do what I do and what I demonstrate in all of my videos because it's my lifestyle, it's what I do. I won't go into a lot of extent of that because I have a lot of other videos on that. I just wanted to say that there's all different kinds of versions of lifestyle bonding. And I want you to really think about what are my goals with my gliders. If your goals with your gliders are to get them to not jump off of you so that you can walk around the house, then you might not want to do tent time. You might not want to do some of the bonding times where they are allowed to jump off of you because that's kind of confusing. Um, but if you don't mind that that's going to be your version of bonding with them and that's what you're going to do on a regular basis, I think that's wonderful. Now, if you have done those versions and now you want to do something more similar to what I'm doing, you can do that. However, it's going to take a while for them to learn the new rules. 
So while you are teaching them to stay on you and not jump off of you, you need to do that in a glider safe room. Now, you, even a room that you think is glider safe may not be. So you really need to thoroughly inspect the room and really look in every nook and cranny. And if they do get off of you and you need to immediately scoop them up so they're trained that they cannot just run loose in the house. So you need to have a big piece of fleece or a shirt or something available so that if they jump off of you, then they can you can scoop them up in that shirt or in that piece of fleece. And then they you just put them right back on you. So they know that, oh, that's not gonna work. This is the boundary and this is what we're gonna do. So I know this video has been super, super long. If you made it through the whole thing, please comment below and say, yes, let's strengthen our bond. <laughs> and then I'll know that you made it all the way through. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider sharing this with somebody that's wanting to know what to do with their glider as far as what their options are with bonding. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day. Oh no, I lost my eye. I found it be, it's blah, blah, blah. This video is gonna be amazing for any person that, okay, got it, nope. And put the bonding pouch, put, sorry please not have it wasted so much energy that I had when I put in no this video is going to be amazing for anyone whether you have oh goodness okay okay ready